my name's John, welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, I've got quite a lot of machining, it's all lathe work. I do some taper turning, uh, make a, a bush and a sleeve for the lathe spindle on my Harrison lathe. That's quite a bit of your meal coming this week, I'll show you some of that. Uh, that'll all be probably at the beginning of the first of the nightcaps. So I know some people don't like to watch your meal and that sort of thing. If you don't like it, just fast forward in 10 minutes and you'll get all the, the machining at the end. I haven't been in the steam rally this week, uh, but today, this afternoon, I went down to Sheldon, uh, where the railway museum is, and Flying Scotsman was there, along with two or three other mainline engines. I get a little bit of video of them, and if I've got time, I'll put them on towards the end of the nightcap. Things are progressing quite well with the uh, t-shirts. Hopefully, I'll have them up and running for next Sunday. Uh, like I said, I've got a lad, one of my viewers has been kind enough to design it for us and do the sort of groundwork to, to make it work. Um, so hopefully we'll have them up and running for next weekend. There's quite a bit of viewer mail came in this week and I've also got a, a box of stuff given at work. As a lad that comes into the garage and he takes like, scrap away, scrap breakers and whatnot. He obviously been in the scrap yard and he found some bits and pieces lying among the scrap and he's brought them in for us. First thing is drill chuck. I don't know why it was thrown away because honestly it's, it's nice and free. It's got a little bit of rust on it which will clean up. It's a half inch drill chuck. It's got the name Cardinal root on it. It's a one more taper and it's a two more sleeve. It closes down nice and tight and there's no apparent wear on the jaw. And there's no wear in those holes there. They normally wear where the chuck key's been put in so that'll be a, a nice drill chuck to use. Next thing is a MRSA DTI gauge on a stand. I've got loads of these stands and gauges, but MRSA is quite good gear. If anybody wants this DTI gauge in stand, all you've got to do is send us an email with your name. If I get more than one, I'll put all the names in a hat. I'll draw them next week, and whoever, whoever's name comes out first, I'll certainly post it off to them completely free of charge. I received a letter this week all the way from the Ukraine. I opened the letter, it's a nice handwritten letter, uh, but what was inside of it that really impressed us is a pencil sketch of Bill Trello's B5 Fowler traction engine. And the rear of it, it says, for John Mills, Acker Double Boost, from one of your videos, Fowler B5 at 540, at 454 on the video. Now I'll put the video on the computer and I found the actual frame that he's copied this off and I'll put the frame and this picture uh, together so you can have a look. It's nicely done. I do like handmade things. That's why I like the, the tool Randy sent us a handmade. Somebody spent the time to sit and draw this. I'm going to photocopy it. I'll give a copy to Bill. That's Bill there. That's Richard. And that's me. And I've actually bought a, a, a picture frame, a cheap picture frame. I'll put it in a picture frame and I'll hang it up in my workshop. That's how much this sort of thing means to me. I'm not even sure how to pronounce your first name. But anyway, you know who we are. Thanks very much. Really is much appreciated. This next package is from America. It's been sent to us by a gentleman called Randy Richard. Uh, Randy Richard's got a YouTube channel, very similar to mine, uh, called Randy Richard in his shop. If you haven't had a look, it definitely is worth a look.
little metal tags Ronnie Richard in the shop right we'll open the first one Ronnie Richard in the shop he's actually put my name on double boost John Mills and what it is is a beautifully handmade scribe really sharp Ideal for digging little bits of metal out of finger ends as well as scribing marks on metal. I'll get some close up shots of this in a minute. Right, I've seen these before on the machining forums. It's a dovetail cutter, who am I a dovetail cutter? Using an insert, once again he's got his, em his emblem on the bottom, Ronnie Richard in the shop. It's also got my name on, Double Boots John Mills. I've got to make some more tool holders for me later for the tool post and this will be ideal for cutting the dovetails. I'll get some close up shots of this and you can see how, how well made it actually is. These are the little name tags that Randy sent us. Are all in the shop. This is the scraper. And that is severely sharp that. Hope you can pick the writing up there. See double boost John Mills. Randy Richard in the shop, quite a nice little tool. This is the homemade melon cutter, dovetail cutter. Once again, it's been nicely engraved. I've seen videos of these working and they really do cut. I'm looking forward to getting it mounted in the mill machine and getting some more layer tool holders made. This is the headstock spindle on my Harrison 140 lathe. It's what they call an L00 type of fitting. It's better than so, not as good as others. I think it's better than a screw down chuck. But personally I prefer like a D13 or a D14 cam lock type chuck. But I'm quite happy with what I've got. It's accurate and very secure. In the end of here is a taper. As loads of people say it, it's a cross between a Morse taper and whatever taper it is. That's a taper it is. That's the adapter that come with this lathe to take it from that taper there to a Morse 3. These pieces here often do come with a lathe that often lost. You can buy one on eBay if you can find a one and they do demand a very high price. Because if your remain has a layer the same as this and his is missing and he was wondering if I could make him one, it'll make quite a nice video doing a bit of tape or turning. Because obviously that's gonna be that tape there is gonna be absolutely perfect. If it's a funny's hair around it'll be no good. In the internal taper, the number three most taper that has to be perfect as well. I'll show you how I set the lathe up, the cut it taper. You can measure the angle, but measuring the angle isn't really going to help you because using the graduations on the compound slide wouldn't get you near enough. So I'm going to show you how I would go about making one of those. I'm just going to use the three jaw chuck because it won't be coming out of the chuck until it's finished, at least the first operation is totally finished. As I've explained before, this is going to be clean, really clean. The slightest piece of shite on there will cut out the chuck, it won't run through. A little bit of oil on there won't do any harm at all. As well as a taper, you've got a, a key at the top. 
Og så går vi sådan der. Big spanner. Jeg vil åbne til den. I'm going to suit up a bit of steel here, I won't be able to get it out of that, no problem at all. Piece of boards in the chuck right, it's actually a place where it wants to fit. These are your jaws in this chuck, and it is reasonably accurate for the three jaw chuck. First thing we'll do, machine that face flat, put a centre drill mark in it. Quite a nice job. I'm just feeding in by hand. We'll be able to have a little bit of onion skin left on the centre drill. This is a nice heavy duty centre I've got with a layer that's actually got a carbide end on it. Just going to take a rough and cut to pull the bar up. Tips aren't breaking, I do not like stringy bass that's coming off like that. Clearly we change the natural horrible. These nasty sharp chips, they like your razor blade, they'll cut you the bits. I've been cut badly before. I think most people that use layers have been. Then I put a different tool in. I put the same depth of cut on in the same free rate. You can see that's breaking the chip. The manageable little bits, it's also a problem, a much much better finish on. Jump the gun, so to speak, by machining this 
what I should have done before I started machining this was set up the compound slide to cut the angle. It's not a problem. All I'll do, I'll take the chuck off with a piece of board in it, mount another chuck, and set the compound slide up, and then put this back together again. I could have cheated and just done it, and nobody would have known. It's only would have known if the compound side had been chained, but. Simply take the chuck off and put it back on again, and we'll still all be nicely lined up. And put the little four door chuck on and just use that. I need to set this drill up so it's running nice and true and then I can put the adapter on there and set up the compound side to the angle of that and we've got it running somewhere near now find a high point which is there, so you tighten the high point jaw once again high point which is there we will loosen this one tighten that one It's getting fairly near now, I'm just going to clean this taper up. reading now go for a high point which is there and that's basically within a couple of tenths if that if I want it any better than that I've got a DTI window and sides in I'll use that it's probably within a tenth certainly near enough I've got no idea what that angle is, I'm not even going to measure it, it's pointless measuring it. I'm going to show you a quick and simple way to set the compound side up to cut that angle. Loosen my two lock nuts off. Obviously that's going to be, the angle of that compound side there needs to be the same as the angle of that. So all we'll do is, we'll line the tool post up. Right, the first thing I need to do, I've got a nice flat block of steel, touch that onto the edge of the 
slide and then the tool post touches up against that and lock the tool post off. Then quite simply line up that so the tool post is touching the tape all the way up and tighten up or nip up the tool just as that means that the angle of that is the same as the angle of that or very very near it we'll now put a clock gauge on so it can get absolutely spot on it's important that the clock gauge is on centre height Slightly down. That looks good. Maybe slightly up slightly more. Right, that's excellent there. Okay, so we've now got a clock gauge set up on centre height. We'll just zero it. And then wind it in using the compound slide. See the reading's getting less, five thou, ten thou, fifteen. We want that to remain at zero, 